Well, so it's November 17th, 2008, and this is the kind of shit weather we're getting. And I'm going to teach you how to change a timing belt on a 2000 Honda Accord VTEC four-cylinder. Welcome to my nightmare. Car is still running great, but it's way past its scheduled timing belt change. And it has two of them. One that drives the oil pump and the balancing shaft, and the other one drives the camshaft. So first step is to remove the wheel and the plastic splash cover behind it. One little trick to show you want to be mechanics, how to make your air impact tool have more power on a little bit of a tight bolt, is if you grab the socket and turn, hold it tight and turn backwards a little bit while you're operating this thing, it actually gives it more torque and it takes the bolt off easier. Didn't need to do it in this case. Next step is just undo all the bolts that hold down your aluminum rocker cover. Loosen all the spark plug wires, just leave them hanging there. Get a pry bar and pop up the rocker cover about that much on this end. Then remove the two bolts that hold the timing cover on. Then remove your motor mount and the ground wire going to it. And put a jack under the motor because when you remove the motor mount, the motor's going to fall down. So put a jack on the oil pan. There, got the cover pried up now. Now for the motor mount. Simple as that. Next step, loosen the two bolts on your power steering pump and then loosen the bolts on your alternator and adjust them back a little bit and get the two belts off. Now remove the bolt on the crankshaft pulley. They're very often extremely tight so you have to heat them around the base of the bolt with a acetylene torch. A propane torch won't work. It's pretty imperative that you use an air tool because if you use a big torque bar or torque wrench it just spins the whole motor and that doesn't do you any good. Now whenever you're removing a very tight bolt Try not to ever use extensions. When you use extensions on air tools or a pry bar, I mean, or a torque bar, you lose a lot of torque because it twists. So you always try to use the shortest socket possible or anything without an extension to do the good, a good job. Use a cutting tip, it's got a lot more heat. Time to get her done. Of course you heat both sides. Okay, let's see if that's enough. She's glowing dimly red. No problem. See, the heat lengthens the bolt, which makes it looser, and causes reduced friction on the areas that are touching each other. So, that's how heat works. Now remove the couple little 10 millimeter bolts that hold on your upper timing cover, and take it off. Now the next step we're going to do is just for safety's sake. Now, here's our next step. Get a little dab of paint or a magic marker. Rotate your bottom crank pulley. It says up on here. So this lever points up. Then put a mark on the cover and a little mark on here with your white paint. And then do the same thing down at the bottom with some point that you choose to mark the position of the crankshaft. Then if all else falls apart and you lose you know, control of where things used to be and you don't know how to reset it up, well just set up your two white marks or whatever you used. To get the lower timing belt cover off, just unbolt the bolts around it, move this little wire out of the way, and you have to unbolt your dipstick tube and pull that out to get access to that one down there below the alternator. And there's another one up here below the power steering. Now that all the cover bolts are off, there's a rubber washer that goes around that bolt. Just peel it off with your fingers. Now pry the timing cover loose. And then maneuver it out of the engine to get it completely out of the way. Done. It came out the bottom, no problem. Now for the white paint. Got the flywheel key, I mean, got the crank key pointing upwards. There happens to be a little dot on the casting here, so I'll make a, make a little white mark to correspond with that. 
Now to put my mark on the cam pulley. All set. No way I can go wrong now. Now you also have your two balance pulleys and your water pump pulley. They do have marks on them to line them up and little corresponding marks on the block. They're a little bit hard to see so put your little marks on with your white dauber again. That'll make it easier and you'll at least remember where they are. So we've got that mark and that mark and one way the hell up there so I'm all set. Now you see the ten center two smooth pulleys. Those are the tensioner pulleys. Put your 14 millimeter wrench on those and of course you've got no room to get your arm in there and that's a very tight bolt to try to swing it. So here's a little mechanics trick. Choose a similar size wrench. This one happens to be 15 millimeters. Hook it on one end of the open end wrench. There, it locks on. Now you have twice the effective strength because your wrench just got twice as long. And I mean that's tight. There. Oh, got her. Now remove the little spring at the back of the motor which tensions the uh, balance shaft belt bolts. Just leave it hanging and then push the lever down and that releases the tension that's tensioning your belt tensioners. Now get your handy dandy pry bar and push way down there on the main timing belt where the cogs are going around the other smooth pulley and push that pulley back and when using your other hand get that wrench again and retighten the tensioner so the belt is tightened in loosened position. Okay, now it's tightened in loosened position so the timing belt is extremely floppy. Now peel it off at the top. Simple. Now, slip off the bottom pulley. <clears throat> no special tools required. Now you can get the timing belts off. <clears throat> Simple as that. So here's the new belt and put the big one on first. Now I've got the belt started to be put on. There's a little mark on this cog that lines up with a little mark on the block. On the pulley that's up above here, I've got my little paint mark lined up too. Belt going around it. The belt tensioner is still tightened down in the loose mode. And, <coughs> and you always put the timing belt on the straight edge first. Peel this edge on first, the front edge. Never peel the edge on where that goes around the tensioner first. So I started doing that and I'll just finish it. My white mark is still lined up with my white mark. Still says up here so everything looks A-OK -okay when I release the tensioner to go tight. Now put on the small belt. To do that you have to put it around the bottom pulley that you've taken off at the same time as you're slipping both of them onto the engine. Now I've just slipped that bottom cog pulley back on and slipped the little belt underneath of it. And peel it on to the corresponding white marks or whatever marks you just made. Now that both belts are on loose but lined up, loosen that tensioner bolt in the middle and there's springs on it and it'll pull those pulleys upwards and that will make the two timing belts pre-tensioned. Then reach down with your hand and grab both wheels and pull them up a little and then completely tighten it. Now one little trick I like to do before I completely finish the job is put the bottom pulley back on the crankshaft of the motor, put the bolt-on finger tight, 
leave all the covers off and everything the way it was and start the car up and see if it runs as good as it did before before you go through all the trouble of reassembling it and maybe made a mistake. So let's do it. <laughs> Sounds good to me. No problems. And no vibrations, so I got those uh, balancer belt on right too. Now to put the plastic covers back on and finish the job. Now recheck now recheck the tension before you put everything back together. That's still good. And that's good too. When a timing belt is at the right tension, you should be able to only be able to give it a half a twist on the long straight side and that's it. Perfect. Well, the bottom cover is back on and the rubber gasket near the bolt. Now just to put on the top cover and then re-tighten the rocker cover down. Reinstall the dipstick tube and then just put the lower crank pulley back on. And make sure you haven't lost that little metal key. And put it back on real tight. Now for the belts. Belts are back on. Now put the motor mount back on. And it's immensely important not to forget your ground wire that grounds the body to the engine. Strange things can happen if that's not hooked up like flickering di digital dashes, noises on your radio, burned out wheel bearings, and I've even once seen it burn out the ball bearings in the knuckle of a CV axle in the front end. Done. This job should have taken you between an hour and an hour and a half if you're good with your hands and like fixing cars. Now time for some beer. <laughs> well, well, that's all the tools it took. An air gun, a big ratchet, a little ratchet, a short 10 millimeter, a long 10 millimeter, a 14 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter deep socket, a couple extensions, 14 mil wrench, a 15 mil to extend the torque on it, 17 mil to get the motor mounts off, and a set of torches, not a big deal.